Hi everyone, this is Studio Slave on behalf of ADSR and in this video we're going to be looking at the ADSR Sample Manager plugin's most recent update and we're going to be using multiple instances of the ADSR Sample Manager to create a techno track. So you can see here I have the plugin and we're going to start off by adding some libraries to the Sample Manager and what this is going to allow us to do is browse any of our files or folders from our desktop or any external hard drives from within the sample manager and then we can drag these into the project or we can use the MIDI through the sample manager uh, and just use it as a sampler. So let's add some files. We'll go to my desktop and we can see it's tagged the files. We can see how many tags we've got, how many files we've got and if there's any duplicates. We can click OK and we can see we now have all of these listed here and you'll start to see information generated on the BPM and the type so whether it's a one shot or a loop and we can then see we have within our file manager here you can see we can open this up and it shows us the file hierarchy so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a few more okay so we've now added some files and folders and we can have a look at these by clicking the information icon here. It tells us the file path, how many files are in this particular folder and whether it's up to date or if it's still analyzing or syncing. We've got the file name. We can drop down and look at the file hierarchy and make our way through these files. And this is going to update the panel on the right hand side. We can also turn this I button that we have on the left on or off and that's going to apply the filter so we can either hide entire file paths or we can show entire file paths. So if I just wanted to search one of these folders I simply double click it and we can see that it exclusively shows us this folder. It adds this to the library as a, uh, a search parameter and it's hidden all the other ones. And if I want to go for the tool room folder I'll just double click that and you can see it's now just searching the toolroom folder and we can do this for multiple folders just by clicking on the eye icon and that is now being searched for and being used as a filter so we can see that this area on the right updates dynamically as we're clicking around and it also updates as we go into the subfolders as well so not only can we search by these folders and by the libraries but we can also just type in a folder or library so we'll go for toolroom and we can see that the toolroom essential library is showing there or we could just type in a tag such as synth and we can see we get the synth tag there so we can combine these and we can search a library such as toolroom and we can combine that with a tag such as synth and then to get rid of these we simply click on the tag for the library or the synth. So that is the folder hierarchy system we have there. We also have the tag library as well which is in alphabetical order and we can go through all of these and we can select single or multiple tags and we can see these are selected because of this icon we have here and then we can just deselect them as well or we can click in the search box to deselect them. We've then got this favourite menu here and to actually get to that you have to make sure you've already got something favorited you can see it tells you how many things you've got favorited so just two at the moment we can click on that and it shows us our favorites as a search filter we can just unfavorite those as well we then have a MIDI indicator so if I start playing with the keyboard we can see the MIDI coming through here and we'd also see the MIDI coming through if we started drawing in some notes We then have the ability to add tags and then we have the actual sample pane here and you can see this is automatically playing the samples and it's going to do that for loops and one shots and we get some controls over adding tags, changing the settings for each of the samples, favoring it and also we have some different modes for MIDI, playback and warp types as well. So if we go to the settings you have the settings page and the help and support page. If we go to the settings page here, we can turn off autoplay samples. So now I can click around 
without firing these samples off, which is quite handy when you're working with loops. And what we can also do is just play them here using the preview button. Or, like me, you can leave that on. And they're just going to play straight away. We've also got a random button as well, which is going to choose a random sample from the samples pane here. And then we've got a few options to export the database, restore our tags if we want to add in our user tags or get rid of them. And also we can set a folder for rendering files as well. Then we also have the update button and the ability to add and edit shortcuts. So let's change this clear favorites shortcut to command option and F. And we can see that it's now changed that shortcut. So we've used a set of modifier keys, command and option there. So that's a general overview of the plugin. So what we're going to do now is have a look at our and or feature up here, which is a new feature that's been added. So this allows us to apply and or logic to our search results. So when we're using tags, what we can do is we can either broaden our tag search or we can use it to narrow down our tag search. So for example, I might be looking for a sample that's tagged with techno or a sample that's tagged with stab. So we're searching, we're dynamically checking our right hand pane for any samples that have got either of these different tags. And what we can do is we can change this search result to something else. So we'll go for stab or synth which is going to be a broad search and what we could do is we can make this a much narrower search by changing this to and so it's going to search to see if it's got the stab tag and the synth tag so we currently have 327 files and if I change this to and you see we don't have any samples that match both of these tags so you can see if you did have a large library how you could use the and or logic to either narrow or widen a search and what we're going to do is we're going to put this into use now. So I'm going to start off by searching a library. So I could either double click this or I could just type in new techno. And we're going to search for kick drums. So let's just type in kick. So it's searching tags for kick. And we can preview some of these. You can see that a lot of these have got the key of the kick on so what I can actually do is just put G in there as well and now we're only going to see kicks that are in G or G sharp so let's have a listen to some of these so I quite like this one it's quite a mean kick so we're going to go with this kick and you can hear there that it's got a bit of bit crushing on it so I'm going to add that as a tag crushed hit enter and you can see that it now has the crushed tag so if we decide we want to change our kick drum we can actually filter the results here either by one shot or by loop just by checking or unchecking the filter at the top so now we're searching by loops or we could only search one shots And you can see that the sample manager is pretty accurate with being able to tell the difference between a one shot and a loop. And we also get the indicator here for what type it is. We get the change in BPM and we get the tags. So let's go back to that sound we already had, which was Griffin. We also have some sample playback options down the bottom, which we'll come on to a little bit later on. So we'll just leave those as they are for now. So now we can play our kick either on the keyboard or by drawing in some MIDI. And notice that it's velocity sensitive. Or we can just go and draw some notes in. So what I've done is I've actually gone and prepared some MIDI for this. I'm just going to turn this down slightly.
So all I've done there to add a bit of interest is I've added in some ghost notes and changed the velocity on those notes just to stop it being so repetitive and sounding like a one bar loop. So now we need to add the bass. So I'm just going to do a quick bit of housekeeping. So we'll right click. Insert MIDI track. And we can see we've got a simpler device. So what I'm going to do, because I use the ADSR Sample Manager quite a lot, is I'm going to go to Plugins, ADSR Sample Manager, drag this onto this MIDI device, and to save myself time later on, I'm going to save as default MIDI track. So click OK. And that is now overwritten the default MIDI track. So if I delete this, right click, Insert MIDI track, we then have a Sample Manager plugin primed and ready to go. So, before we move straight onto the bass, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some effects to our kick because although it is a nice sounding kick drum, so the kick is sounding pretty good, but at the moment it's not sounding very techno. So, what we're going to do is add an audio effects rack to it to get it sounding a bit more techno with some reverb and stuff like that. Okay, so what I'll do is I will turn all of these devices off and then I'll turn them on one by one so you can hear what's going on. So, first we've got our bass, so playing the kick. Just to add a bit more bottom end. I've then got a bit of a crazy looking EQ, but once we get to the end of the chain, you'll see why I added this in. I might have had to go further down here, then tweak this to remove some of the resonance. We've got a glue compressor, we then have saturation on one chain, these are a parallel chains, so we have some saturation, and then on this chain we have some reverb, which is being side-chained to this kick. Then what I've done is I've bracketed that reverb, which means I've removed the highs and the lows with a bandpass filter, so now I'm only using a small bandwidth of the reverb sound. So you can see it's just a reverb. We'll set this up so it's receiving signal from the kick. And you can see there I've just used a bandpass filter. And then we also have an EQ and a limiter. So all in all we have this. Okay, so the kick is now sounding a lot better and much more cavernous, and we're going to look at the bass. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to save that MIDI track that I've just created with the sample manager on it for the percussion, and I'm going to insert an audio track because I'm going to show you a trick for creating reverb-style techno basses from the actual kick. So we'll rename this bass and color code it. And what we're going to do now is we're going to actually take the audio from the kick. And to do that, we go to the audio from here, from the drop down, which is the input outputs, which we have here. We're going to select the kick. And then if we press play, we can see that this is coming through here and the audio from, but we're not going to hear it yet until we press this in button, which is going to allow us to monitor that back. And it's going to be a bit louder we've got these signals summing together but the problem is with doing this is that when I want to work on this sound if I solo it because it's post mixer you see that this is no longer green it's because the signal is not reaching this channel because it's post mixer it's after the mixer and because I've soloed this we can no longer hear the kick however if we change this to post effects, so it's before the mixer, we're now free to solo and work on our different sounds and we're still going to hear the signal because it's before the mixer, so the mixer isn't going to affect it. So that's a useful tip. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set this at around minus six because we don't need it too loud. I'm going to keep this muted for the time being and the reason I'm going to keep it muted is just so we can work on the bass without any distractions 
from the kick and so it doesn't double in level at the moment because we do have duplicate sounds. So with the bass I've created another audio effect rack called bass. I'm going to just drop that on here and once again we'll go through these. So all we really want here is a bit of a rolling subby bass line. So on its own it's just a kick drum. I'm going to add even more reverb to it and notice this is fully wet as an insert effect. So at the moment we've got way too much high frequencies going on here but first let's get a powerful and distorted signal. We're then going to band pass that or bracket it so we only have a very small section of it. And you can see this is really quite resonant but it's what we want. Let's hear it now in context with the kick. Okay, so we're starting to get there, but the problem we have at the moment is we've got interference with the kick and the bass because they're both playing at the same time, you're still getting that audible distortion. So to get rid of that, we can use a tool called the LFO tool. It's All it's doing is ducking the signal here, and we can do that using different shapes. So I've created this shape here and you can see it's ducking the kick here so the kick is sounding during this portion and then I've got this extra part here which is just to add a little bit of groove and a nice sort of doubled sound to it so and if you find you're getting clicking noises you just need to make some fine-tune adjustments until you've got it sounding right and I suggest when you do edit this you do do it in context with your kick drum and if you don't have the LFO tool you can do this with either session view clip automation or simply using a compressor Finally, we've got a amp device, which I'm going to turn off for now. And then we also have an EQ8 if we need to do any adjustments a little bit later on. So this is quite loud at the moment. I am working with a limiter on the master bus. But what we'll do is we'll just group our kick and our bass together and we're just going to turn them down a little bit so they're not quite so loud. So that's the end of this video where we've explained the basics of the sample manager and created our kick in the bass and in the next video we'll look at the percussion.